the clinical research coordinators or clinical research staff um, SharePoint and Teams um, that has been set up by Haley and Tricia and their work with the um, Workforce Development Initiative. I will include their emails here underneath that. Um, if you are not a member of that team, I have seen people sharing tips, information, resources, where to find things. Um, so please reach out to Tricia and Haley and join that um, SharePoint and Teams. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention really fast is that there is a follow-up to the March um, recruitment workshop focusing on DEI. And that will be, there should be an announcement coming out or it may have already come out and I haven't seen the email yet. Um, that will be on June 30th at 9 a.m. This time it will be hybrid, both in-person and Zoom op options are available and we are not um, limiting the participation based on size. So if you have any interest in that, um, please look for the email with, with details on that, which should be out today. Uh, and then lastly, I'll just put a plug that the Health and Research Fair is coming again. It will be at the end of October. Um, it is scheduled for October 28th, and there will be more information about that coming. Um, if you have any questions or if you know already that you want to be a part of that, either through um, recruiting for your study or just helping, um, you can reach out to Jema um, or Marie, and I will put their email addresses in the chat. Okay. That's all the announcements I have. And I think I saw John joined. John, are you? I... So John, I think you might be a, a team of one. I'm not sure if, if Lori or Deb have joined, but we have John here to speak with us about um, consent and research billing. Is that right? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I think yeah. we missed the follow-up somewhere in the presentation, but my understanding, I do recall, um, I think I was going to talk about the consent and what the standard language and why. Um, and so I don't have a presentation. I'm sorry about that. Um, but um, let me share this. Um, Can we see the consent, everybody? Great. So we, um, this is our standard language for uh, consents around billing and do I have to pay for anything? So one of the reasons uh, this is an issue is because um, I think some of our older wording had options along the lines of uh, you won't be charged for anything. And that creates confusion in the context of um, inpatient study visits uh, or in hospital study visits um, where it's not necessarily clear to the patient um, or the subject where the research ends and clinical care begins and vice versa. Um, uh, so we worked with UC Health and Children's on these statements um, and these should be in every consent form when um, study procedures are taking place in one of our health systems. So option one, you will not be charged for the study device, the drug, or any study procedures or office visits for this study. That's nice and clean. Oftentimes that's a little oversimplistic. Um, option two, you and your insurance will have to pay for all the visits, procedures, and care described in this consent form. Um, Oncology may run into this quite a lot. You are responsible for co-payments and deductibles that are standard of care for your insurance coverage. Um, option three, you or your insurance will have to pay for the visits, procedures, and cares that are routine care for your medical condition. You will be responsible for co-payments and deductibles that are standard for your insurance company um, coverage. The study will pay for visits, procedures, and care done only for research. These include, though may not be limited to, and then the study team would insert a summary of those uh, procedures that are covered. Um, when applicable, tell the subjects that the drug or device will be provided at no cost to you. Um, that's typical for a drug study. However, you or your insurance will be billed for preparing and administering the study drug, implementing study device. Might be a charge for an infusion, for example, while, while there's no cost to, a, to the drug per se. 
And then a standard statement about where to send patients with questions about um, their bills. Um, um, let me stop right there and ask if anybody has any questions. Doesn't seem like it. Um, the other context that we didn't exactly, um, when I drafted this consent form, um, our focus was on research in the hospitals. Um, as you probably know, we have a lot of research that is clinical research that never enters into the hospital. Not a lot, but we do have some where subjects are enrolled from the community. They may be seen on campus. Um, there never is a bill um, sort of created. So there's no confusion about accidentally being billed for research. Um, so that is a smaller subset of studies, but I've seen it enough that we're gonna need to address, make a little tweak to our standard consent form language um, to capture those situations because none of those standard statements actually apply in that context. Um, but if you have old consent forms, and the consent form has that statement, you won't be charged for anything. Um, you might stop and consider whether that's a little bit of an oversimplification. Because um, that's, um, then the, the patient gets a bill, patient complains to UC Health, and then they have to go to the consent form. And if it wasn't clear, um, hospital covers the cost. So I think if you're, you're on solid ground, if you use our standard wording, um, this, uh, I understand, still comes up um, on a pretty regular basis within UC Health, this being sort of um, misunderstandings about whether research subjects are going to be billed or not. Um, if you want to revise a consent form of your own will, you can do it at your, um, at your leisure. Um, you can package it with other changes that you're considering. Um, we, there's no sort of policy or requirement at this point. So um, I would just encourage you to look at your consent forms, see if they make sense to you. And if not, uh, consider submitting an amendment. Any other questions? That's all I got. Okay. John. <laughs> um, I think the I don't see lawyer Deb. Um, there might have been a mix up with dates. Um, I think one of the things that Lori had sent out before was to make it clear that industry sponsors must pay all costs for evaluation and treatment of a research-related injury um, per UCH policy. Research participants insurance cannot be billed for any research-related injury. Um, and all industry sponsor agreements need to include provisions for research-related injury. And so those are also considerations when we're thinking about this. Um, so we, we are light on content. <laughs> this this month so i'm going to open up the floor to anybody now that we have what do we have 59 uh, members of the research community are there questions or issues that anyone would like to bring up for our open discussion and i know it's a large group and and nobody is prepared um I can add something. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, I want to, for everybody who completed the survey about the Comerb application, I just want to say thank you. Um, we got some very good comments and feedback. We are working on that project. The current draft of the application is about a third the length of the version we have on our website right now. So I will be reaching out um, to a number of you about participating in those focus groups. Um, and I'll say also thank you to my team members, Tricia and um, Tiffany and Kat. Awesome. 
Um, Trisha and Haley, is there another roundtable on the books scheduled in the near future? Let's see. Yeah, it's not going to be until the fall, though. Um, so we'll put more communication out as it gets a little bit closer. But we knew people had a lot of vacations and things planned over the summer. Um, so we'll make sure that gets out to everybody. We'll probably do an RSVP again, too, just to make sure we have a large enough room. Um, typically, they've been in A01 in one of the larger conference rooms that holds about 45 people. So lots of room if you haven't joined, but it is a great way to just talk in person, talk about what needs you have, talk about what you'd like to see on campus, um, a chance to just connect with people who are in similar roles and be able to share with each other. And we can break into smaller groups, too. So if this large group is scary, please don't let that hold you back from coming to that. Thanks, Amy. Um, any other topics or discussion items? Maybe I'll just give a brief update on what's going on in my office in the various groups. I saw Allison come off on camera too, so she can speak after. But so IND office is opening July 1. There's already transition plans in place. This is for all new INDs and IDEs after July 1st need to go through that. Um, Smartsheet triage form that I posted a link to in the chat. Existing studies um, will likely stay the same way. Some may fold into the IND office on a case by case basis. Um, so if you have questions about a specific open study, reach out to the IND office. Um, we're also working on recruitment resources. Um, we do have that workshop that I mentioned earlier on the 30th. Um, and we are working on social media um, advertising for studies, and we'll have more to share about that um, in a month or two. We're piloting a few studies to see how best to support that internally instead of sending people to external companies like Bump and, and those type of places. Um, so we'll talk more about that in a future discussion. Um, then Crest, I think, has Crest is the has been around since 2017. Crest is still um, offering fee, fee for service coordination, regulatory support, monitoring, um, budget, and startup um, work. And so, if you have a need for anything in that area, Erin McDonough, who usually leads these meetings, is the program director of Crest. You can reach out to her, or you can reach out to me, and I can I can get it to them. Um, yeah, I think that's majority of what we have going on. Allison, did you want to say anything? I, I was just going to kind of add in on that. The, um, I see Tim's on the, um, based on collaboration with the CCTSI, particularly in relation to the next grant funding cycle, um, there's, there are resources going to be available to really think about centralized recruitment and what that should look like and workforce development. So um, the work that, hey, I really have to thank Haley and Trisha for all that they've done to kind of kickstart these conversations. But um, we do have within the next, the next CCTSI grant is seven years. Um, and so that, you know, we don't have to develop everything tomorrow, but we have a we have resources and we have commitment to actually move um, these initiatives forward. So it's not a theoretical what would people like, but actually I really do want people to start to think about what centralized resources would have the biggest impact for for you as a research community and what does that really look like? So um, please put your thinking caps on. And, um, and I know Trisha and Haley are really thinking about what would an orientation look like? Um, what can we centralize? What can we support? There's a lot of turnover and so kind of making a commitment on resources for workforce development and um and training orientation is going to be a big lift but i think we're hearing a lot of interest in moving in that direction i think we just all have 
slightly different ideas about what that really means. Um, and so kind of getting some consensus there would be really helpful. So I suppose all I'm saying is this work that's happening is not happening in, in a vacuum. And um, hopefully we're going to kind of continue to work together to see it come to some fruition. Yeah, and I'll echo that beyond just workforce development. If anybody has thoughts on, on the recruitment, and then we are also, the, the thing I didn't mention is novel clinical trials. There's a working group being set up to think about decentralized clinical trials as well as pragmatic EHR embedded trials um, with the CCTSI um, taking the lead on the pragmatic EHR embedded trials. But thinking about what the gaps are in resources at the institution and what things we would like to see developed in order to better support those types of um, trials. So if anybody has any thoughts on those, please reach out as well. And the other plug I'm gonna make while uh, I have everybody and John's on the um, line too is, please, um, we're continuing to have conversations with research teams once studies have been developed. Um, it really, I, I can guarantee you, um, whether you reach out to COMERB, whether you reach out to the Clinical Research Administration Office, um, the Privacy Office, if you've got questions, if you've got an unusual study, if you're thinking about doing something a little different that you're not comfortable with, please reach out early. Everybody is willing to, um, to come to the table and have these discussions early. Um, it just saves everybody a lot of time and um, a lot of wasted paperwork um, to do anything, um, to be doing it after the fact. And, and what we continue to see is that it's in the details of operationalizing studies that questions start to come up. And so I, I think the sooner we think about not just getting approval to get started, but actually how you want to do the studies uh, and, and what conducting them means. I see a little bit of a disconnect between the PIs and the research coordinator team that I'm not sure that everybody is having conversations before, um, before a study is, <laughs> is looking to move forward because oftentimes it's you that are bringing forward these um, questions about actually, how do we do this? Um, so just if you can encourage your research um, faculty to really connect with you and if you can connect with, with the resources that are available, I think um, we can really move things along more quickly and more effectively. We're seeing a lot of conversations. I'm just going to put it out there with people wanting to do things with AI and chat GPT. Um, there is a lot of challenges um, with that kind of research. And some of the institutional infrastructure that we're going to need to do that work is in development, but it is not currently existing. So um, again, if you are looking to do work in that arena, please be reaching out and talking to us sooner rather than later, um, because there's going to be parameters around how we do that work. And we're all trying to figure it out together and work with the hospitals on what's going to be appropriate using um, their data sets too. So um, that's an area where it's just kind of, um, it's hard to kind of keep, keep a handle on what people are wanting to do, but um, we are working on it. So um, there'll be more to come on that too, but just know that if you're heading in that direction, you're put, we are kind of pushing the frontier and we need to work together. And then Haley posted a reminder, the presentation and infographic on the workforce development survey is available on that Teams that we mentioned. So reach out to Haley and join that Teams and you can share that infographic um, with the rest of your team and your PIs. Um, and then John posted a link to the template that he showed earlier in, in the presentation. So if you guys wanna see that, um, there's a link in the chat now. 
any other well and on a similar line i would say you know so john's work on the um application form is is an attempt for you know is us working to try and be more efficient and effective if there are other processes that you identify where you think there are things we could do differently or more efficiently again please reach out um, and let us know. Sometimes we think we only know what we know and what we hear. So without that feedback, we can think that things um, make sense from, from your perspective um, and, um, and they don't. So um, please don't hesitate to be reaching out to different groups and going, you know, have you thought about um, a different approach or, if there are things which we could just be clearer about, then uh, just let us know. It's a quiet group, a lot of, <laughs> I feel like I'm looking at a lot of blank screens. <laughs> yeah, so I take it that everybody, is doing well, nobody has any issues right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's fine, I think we can end early. If there are no other items, um, we'll go ahead and, and close this one out and regroup. I did hear from, from Lori, and I think we'll reschedule Lori's um, piece of this talk to a, to a later meeting. I would just like to remind folks too that all of these meetings are recorded um, and I just put in the chat the link to the page where you can find all the past recordings. So if you are unable to attend a future meeting, or if you have a colleague that is unable to attend, you might want to just direct them to that page so they can listen to recordings of past meetings or even register for the meetings moving forward. Thanks, Natasha. All right, have a, have a good day and we will see you back in July on the third Tuesday. Thanks.